What's up, YouTube, and happy Tuesday. Now, if you like listening to our podcast through the YouTube channel or just watching the videos that we upload, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on that bell so you're notified when new videos are posted. So this week, we return our For the Love of the Game series because who better to know the Virginia athletes and coaches than those people that know them best? And this week we have a special guest, Lauren Higgins. So let's get right to it. Hi, and welcome to a new episode of the Good Old Podcast. I'm Jackie Franchuli for Oahu is 24-7. And we're here with a new edition of the For the Love of the Game series. And as you know, this is an excellent opportunity to get a look behind the scenes of how the Virginia program works. Because who better to really let us into who are these athletes, who are these coaches, and the people that love them the most. And this week, I'm really excited to welcome Lauren Higgins. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I, I know we, have, we can talk about your husband here in a second, but you are quite known for your Virginia women's basketball career and what you've done with the program. I saw you at Coach Mox's press conference. Yeah. How excited are you about where this program is headed? I'm really excited. Coach Mox had a really great energy. Um, I think most importantly, she was really grateful for the opportunity to be here. And she looks like she's enthused and ready for the task at hand. So, and she seems like she's got a lot of, a lot of good people in her corner that are going to help her kind of turn things around and get things going. You never really leave the program. Um, you know, once you're in UVA, once you're a player, you never really leave the program. How much do you like what you're seeing just now with, you know, all the stuff that's going to recruiting? I'll just say enthusiasm on social media. I feel like I could just feel that enthusiasm reap through. Yeah. I mean, to me, I think no matter what the sport is, that's what you want. You know, you want someone who's really passionate and really invested in being here. And most importantly, wanting to find the student athlete that's going to be the best fit for our university community. Um, and I think that that's she's built for the task at hand. How much do you think back over your playing career? Because you're in a, in, in a very unique situation where you're still in the same place that you, you played your basketball college career. How much do you look at how much UVA has grown in athletics and just how everything has kind of changed in Charlottesville? Yeah, I mean, Charlottesville is really special to Marcus and I. Um, I came to Charlottesville. I probably shouldn't even say this out loud, but I came to Charlottesville in 1996. Um, and I was so enthusiastic to be here and – um, I grew up in Philadelphia. I grew up watching Dawn Staley play. Um, she was the first women's basketball game I had ever seen. UVA played at Temple, which at McGonagall Hall in Philadelphia. And I, I saved the ticket from that game and I kept it in my locker when I was here. So I've never taken this place for granted. Um, and I really have a deep appreciation. Um, after I got done playing, I also worked as Coach Ryan's Director of Basketball Operations. Um, so to watch the growth and the evolution of both our university and our, the city of Charlottesville and our women's basketball program, I, I think it's amazing. We've had amazing leadership, um, but I also have a real deep appreciation for still honoring tradition and still trying to do things the right way and operating with integrity. And I think sometimes um, people have no idea how hard that really is in this landscape of college sports. And if anyone doesn't know, uh, you're married to Marcus Higgins, uh, you know, wide receivers coach and associate head coach of the Virginia football team. Let's take you back into uh, when you guys both were student athletes at UVA. How did you guys meet on campus? It was just something that, you know, student athletes just hang out together. How did you guys meet? Yo, know, I'm actually a little bit older than Marcus. So my first year out of school um, was his first year in school. Um, so we would see each other in passing, but really didn't make the connection until a little bit later on when I was in graduate school. Um, but I would always say my my favorite thing about Marcus and what drew me to him was Marcus, a lot of people don't know this, during the summer, uh, a lot of student athletes don't have jobs, but during the summer, Marcus worked in the facilities department with a lot of the guys um, who are kind of unsung heroes in the athletic department. And he was cutting the grass and lining the fields and um, it was just kind of a humility and a work ethic about him that reminded me a lot of my dad and things that I always grew up valuing. Um, and we really kind of got to know each other from there. Well, let's take you back. Was he kind of pursuing you this or like, do you have any fun stories of when you not, were dating? Not really. We would see each other in passing and saw each other in grad school. One of Marcus's really good friends was actually 
playing in Philadelphia at the time for the 76ers. So he'd spend some time there. And I think it was like a game of horse that I think I beat him in pretty badly in U-Haul. I'm aging myself again. Um, and we ended up going to a Sixers game and, and kind of build a friendship from there. We didn't actually really start dating until Marcus was in St. Louis with the Rams. And that's quite, you know, when, when you look at how your relationships kind of span different states and how his career has kind of taken you different places, but then back here to Charlottesville, when you, when you talk to somebody about, you know, being a, a coach's wife, being, you know, someone who's had to kind of navigate this world, what is the biggest misconception you hear? Well, you know, Marcus will always remind me that, um, you know, whatever things seem as sacrifices and, and they are, but they're part of the privilege. You know, we try to keep it in perspective in our house. Marcus is not on the front line serving in the military. He's not policing our communities. He's, you know, not in our hospitals. But um, whereas most people just think it's a lot of fun and it is, um, I do think it comes with a lot of sacrifice and I would probably say that it impacts the kids um, and the of the families the most. Um, and we were just talking before we, we came on, um, you know, today is Jackpot's birthday. So I have two kids who we try to have children in the spring, not in the season, but, you know, not spring ball, but, you know, also recruiting. Um, and so Marcus was not going to be able to be here for his birthday. So it's it's just small instances like this where our normal looks a little bit different. Um, and there are a ton of privileges and plus size, but I think that you have to just really be flexible and fluid as a family, you know, whether it's holidays or birthdays or time at the office. Um, and we're grateful for it all. Um, but yes, I think sometimes for kids, they're wondering why their childhood or, or their birthdays might look a little bit different. But you also gain a family. You know, I had Savannah 2J on the show and she also talked about how just the coaches kids just get together and they know each other you know she said that she used to babysit the Beck children so for you do you feel like that, that's the same thing that you've kind of experienced a being like this where kids just kind of gravitate towards each other too i think the kids definitely gravitate towards each other and for us i think it's a little bit different because um you know as i said we're super grateful to be here and this will now be the third head coach that marcus has um been with but for our boys they've had to get to know different sets of kids um, and, you know, when Coach London was here, there weren't many young kids on the staff. So the boys were just kind of the babies of the crew. Um, where we rely heavily is our relationships with the players. You know, like I know Marcus can't be here today, but we've had lots of boys show up and show love and come sing happy birthday with us or babysit for us and um, celebrate things together. So we have really deep relationships with, with the players, uh, along with the, the coaches' kids. Um, and I think that's kind of where you have to lean on one another. Um, to keep each other good company when the when the coaches are hard at work. Well, is Christopher Jackpot going to be a football player or a basketball player like their mom? You know, they um, we're just happy that they love sports. Quite honestly, it, them being passionate about sports and wanting to be at practice and wanting to sit in on meetings and um, it makes this life a little bit easier um, because if it weren't of interest, I, I could imagine it would impact them differently. But the boys are very interesting. They are completely in, immersed into whatever season it is. So right now they're playing both basketball, a little bit of AAU basketball, and they're full on in baseball, um, and they play flag football. Christopher just recently wrote a persuasive essay about why it's time for him to play tackle football. And he actually read it in one of the offensive staff meetings and asked the coaches to vote on it. So, um, but they, they play basketball, baseball, and football and anything else, you know, they're, they're oftentimes seen out at men's lacrosse practice or the women's lacrosse practice, or, you know, they'll catch a volleyball game or anything where they can cheer on the who's they're there. Uh, how did that vote go? It, they, they, everybody signed off on it. Everybody, except for coach E coach Elliot said, Jack or Christopher, I did not play tackle football until I was 12. <laughs> So, um, but everybody else said, you know what, go for it. Did you sign off on it? That's the most you important know, I question. Said, let's wait and see. I said, let's wait and see. <laughs> so I think he's got plenty of time. And Marcus always says, you know, they're going to have to beg to play football and they're going to have to really want to do it. So right now, I mean, I think I would say that I'm the more, um, I'm the more aggressive one, you know, in terms of, and, and but Marcus is very laid back and very positive and he's just, He's very smart in saying, you know what, just let them have some fun. They'll figure it out. 
And through all this, you know, you mentioned it earlier, you know, you guys have been here through three head coaches, but that means through three coaching searches where you guys didn't know, well, to her, where you didn't know what was going to happen, you know, yeah. obviously. So how do you handle that? Like, tell me the emotion just from this recent coaching search of you've been in this community for so long as a player, then afterwards as in Marx's wife and just, you know, people and you, you worked with Debbie Ryan. How tough was you not knowing the future like that? You know, I think, um, again, Marcus will remind me that this is part of the privilege and you kind of know that this is the business that you're in and and this is the hard part about the business. Um, I think what's a little bit trickier about this last transition is that no one really saw it coming. Um, so it was it was just kind of a quick and um, shocking, you know, transition. Um, and so you know, again, for I always bring it back to the kids. It's a couple of weeks before Christmas. And the one thing that you get to look forward to for the kids, or at least tell them is, you know, we're going to be going to a bowl game. We're going to all be together and we're going to have some fun. So it was a combination of, um, you know, a, a pretty a quick transition um, and not going to a bowl game. But you try to keep that stuff in perspective. Um And you just want at the end of the day to try to show some empathy and compassion to everybody involved. And, you know, although, you know, it might be coming and although, you know, it's part of the business, I don't think it makes it any easier. Um, and so transitions are hard. So I'm just grateful for Marcus that he's always really positive and he is pretty steady in his emotions. And, you know, he's also pretty selfless. He always will remind us, like, he and I care so deeply about the university that if it were in its best interest in the football program's best interest for Marcus to move on to the next chapter, then we would be okay with that. And, you know, maybe in the moment we might have some, some harder feelings about it, but I think Marcus knows that if, if the best thing to do or the right thing to do is, is to move forward, then I think he would be okay with that. But it's, it's tricky. It was a very hectic couple of weeks, you know, managing the holidays and what was next and, um, and just trying to keep the kids nice and even. I always have to I gave the teachers, their, both of their teachers, a heads up, you know, that it was a tricky time and we were just waiting to see how things were going to shake out. So we're, we're grateful that we have not worn out our welcome in Charlottesville yet. I'm guessing that relief that you guys felt once Tony Elliott offered the job must have been great. It, it was. It was. I think, you know, I'm, I'm biased to market about Marcus. I'm protective of Marcus and he is... I always tell everybody he's the most humble and, and the kindest person I know, even if he were not my husband. Um, but I'm grateful that he has poured and invested into his, his players um, and he's earned a lot of goodwill in this community and at the university. And um, I think that people see his value and know that he wants to just do whatever it takes to help this university and help the football program. So we're, we're really grateful that Coach E gave him the opportunity and believed in him um and kept him on board how you know you become like an ex another mom to these wide receivers on on campus too um they usually come to you know their their families are so far away how was that like for you during this time of change a lot of these guys didn't know what was going on and with the transfer portal they might have been you know lured away because they're they're trying to figure out what's best for themselves of course as a as a group i guess the unit's mom how tough was it for you you know, it was hard more than anything. Um, and I think any of the kids on the team will tell you, we are not just confined to the wide receivers. So we had lots of kids over and lots of different position groups. And we try to just be encouraging and not and ask the kids not to react too quickly or too strongly and to keep everything in perspective. Um, and lucky for us, we have spent so much time building relationships with these kids. And I think that they know that we have their best interests at heart, um, that it's easy for us to have harder conversations and be really honest with one another. And, you know, Marcus will always tell the kids, if I didn't believe that this was the best place for you, I wouldn't ask you to stay. Um, and I wouldn't ask you to weather this storm. Um, and so it was tricky. You know, I think this, this last transition, it was kids who the majority of their college experience was through COVID. Um, and then when you have, like I said, the bowl game to look forward to, and unfortunately, because of circumstances, that didn't happen. And then you have a transition of coaching. It's, it was a lot to ask of them. Um, and so just to try to love them up and to pour positivity in them and to put their parents' mind at ease, um, that was really where we tried to put our energy.
I always say that a lot of people don't realize how much goes behind the scenes. It's not just about the X's and O's. There's a lot of stuff goes behind the scenes. Cause again, at the end of the day, these, you know, m young men are coming in first time leaving out of, outside their homes and, you know, they have to look up to somebody. And I feel like the family behind all these coaches are actually the ones who, you know, you, you have to be their family and support them. No, we're lucky. I think, I think that's part of the blessing of, in, of Marcus being a coach and having these relationships. Um, and lucky for me, having been an athlete myself and knowing how impactful coaches and mentors were to me, when Marcus decided that this was the career he was going to pursue, you know, we made a commitment that we were going to both be all on, all in and do whatever we could to pay it forward and to treat kids the way that we were treated and try to impact kids the way that we were impacted um, and to do whatever we could to serve the university. Um, and also, you know, we try to model that for our boys because, you know, there's a chance our boys are student athletes one day and we hope that people do it the same thing for them. You know, uh, the, we have a lot of parents that are super grateful and a lot of, of the players on the team are super grateful. And I just always tell them it's, it's what we're supposed to do. And I ask you to pay it forward. Always be respectful to coach and, and be kind to the boys. That's all we ask. So we've been really lucky that we've had some really amazing kids um, in our life. And we, we stay in touch with them. I mean, we, we just had Darius Jennings that he spent the, the weekend with us here at our house a couple of weeks ago. And we're going to Andre Leveroni's wedding this upcoming Friday. And, you know, whether it's updates on jobs or families or children, um, you know, we have, we're in constant touch with, a really amazing group of, of players that we've been lucky enough to love and get to know. I'm guessing a lot of nieces and nephews now. Yes, exactly. And, and I know uh, the last few years have been, you know, a lot of stuff you guys have to deal with adversity. One thing is you were diagnosed with breast cancer. How's that recovery been for you in just the last few years? And how much did you really rely on this UVA community during that, that time period? Yeah. Um, I, I'm healthy and I'm grateful um, and I get a lot of love and care um, here at this at the university and just in the larger Charlottesville community. Um, it was kind of caught of caught. I was caught off guard um, getting sick. I actually am always really diligent about my doctor's appointments. And during the time that I went, I actually had a friend who I was visiting at the time. You know, she was going through chemo for breast cancer. And so I, I went to my, my appointment and, you know, they said, you know what, you're good. You're, you're young and you're fit. You have no family history. Um, and I kind of pressed them about getting a mammogram and sure enough, you know, I left that day, left the office with, with breast cancer and called Marcus and said, you have to pick the boys up from school and told him what happened. He didn't even really know I was even at the doctor's that day. So, um, but I was lucky and I got a lot of love and care and, you know, it's, again, it goes back to kind of how things can be a little bit different for football families because, you know, Marcus was on the road recruiting while I was going through treatment and I would drop the boys off at school and then go get treatment. And I'd actually go to McHugh and just work out afterwards. Um, I was on coach Ryan's staff when she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and she was a really strong reminder and motivator to me when I was sick. And I just remember how resilient she was and how tough she was and you know, I remember every day she would try to walk or work out. So she, she told me when, when I was going through it, she's like, just go and move each day, you know, go and move and work out and, and just be really good to yourself. And also, you know, with all that, I try to encourage the players on the team to do, I wanted to be able to walk the walk. So I figured if I showed up at McHugh every day, I would get some movement in and work out and let the, let the guys know that, you know, this is just kind of how you have to handle adversity and you kind of have to just I tell them all, you got to fight the fight. So, um, but I was, I was really lucky in having a lot of people that were just kind and supportive and, and helpful. And uh, Quamina Williford was going through it as well. So she and I um, were, encouraged each other and supported each other. And um, I'm just really grateful. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. And we have an incredible hospital here and incredible doctors. And, you know, it's one thing that Marcus will always remind me of as we're figuring out what's next in this life, you know, and, and what the next chapter might bring that he's, it's one of his, his hesitancies to ever leave this place is that we just get such, such good care here. And, you know, one thing that I, I remember, I wasn't living in Charlottesville anymore, but I remember listening to you and talking of using your platform so that women do have 
more checkups? Is that something that you felt compelled to do? Because like you said, you have this privilege and you wanted to use your platform so other women wouldn't be blindsided. Yeah, you know, I really felt like my friend that was going through it was she fell on the sword for me. I feel like if I didn't watch that and and she didn't encourage me that I probably wouldn't have caught it as early as I did and I could have had a much different outcome. Um, and so I, I felt the need to just encourage people. I think it's, you know, something that people aren't always as diligent or people don't take the time for themselves and nobody loves a mammogram. Um, so, but just encouraging people that if you do, and you have the opportunity and you have the, the means and the care to do it, the, to really try to encourage people to go and, and get a checkup and take good care of themselves. When you look back over the course of all the, all your years at UVA, what is the one thing that always stands out about a memory, even as a, a coach's wife, a player, what's something that always stands out? I, I think it's the people here. You know, I, we have Marcus and I have been so blessed to to meet so many incredible people here, and people who still to this day love us and care for us. And um, you know, I can't even begin. Coach Ryan, you know, I'm still in touch with Coach Ryan, and I'll meet Coach Ryan for coffee. One of my old teammates, Katie Kishore, um, who recently opened the Kindness Cafe, she's here in town. Um, just a lot of teammates and people who, who show our kids a lot of love. I mean, we're still in touch with Coach Little Page. Um, he calls the boys every Christmas Eve and, and pretends to be Santa Claus. So, I mean, I think that sometimes when you're just on the outside looking in, um, it is hard to remind yourself that, that this community of people is, is, goes beyond wins and losses. Um, but I think we've always been reminded of just the good in people. Um, and, and what an awesome community it is and how it's rallied around us and just treated our family with a lot of love and care. Well, Lauren, I really appreciate your time today and just talking to us about just, just changing kind of the perspective of, you know, just the life around college football. Well, I'm happy to be here and, um, and happy to answer any questions. And we're, like I said, we're really grateful to be here and grateful to know great people like yourself. Thank you so much, Lauren. Thanks again to Lauren. It's always nice to have a different opinion, different perspective of college athletics and the Virginia program. And obviously Lauren is in a unique position where she can offer her perspective from not only the athlete's perspective, but also as a coach's wife. So thanks again to her. And although spring football is done, we're not done over at Wahoo's 24-7 or here at the Good Old Podcast. We'll continue to have new episodes every Tuesday, so make sure you follow us or wherever you listen to your podcast. And please rate and review our podcasts on Apple. So for Lauren Higgins, I'm Jackie French-Uley, and hope you have a great rest to your week.